Well, welcome to the show, everybody. Robert Bishop, Robert Bishop Photography over in the UK. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah, glad to have you. Yeah. How's it going over there? Good, yeah. Other than, uh, you know, imminent lockdown and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But uh, Starts tomorrow, right? Uh, midnight tomorrow, yeah. Or, wait, midnight Thursday, right? Or, uh, midnight Wednesday, so yeah. as it moves into Thursday, yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know what that means for going out taking photography, but... You know, I, I was reading that, you know, and I, when I was talking to Andrew Hamilton, um, he said the restrictions aren't quite as bad as they were back in, uh, you know, March, April time. Yeah, I think so. I need to look them up, really. But um, I, back in April, it was like you had to, you could only have an hour, I think, at a time exercise. And I think now there might be no restrictions on the amount of time, but I need to double check, to be honest. Yeah, you know, I was reading through all the restrictions. and it, I mean, honestly... It, I, I kind of like it because I think your government, some people I feel like probably overreaching a little bit, but honestly, it seems like they're doing a lot more for you than say what our government's doing, which is, in my opinion, absolutely nothing. I don't want to make this political, but, um, you know, at least something's happening to try to protect you guys a little bit, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. At least for now. So we'll, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what happens if it carries on for a long term, but... For those of us who don't, you know, know a whole lot about you, you know, uh, give us a little bit of your background. Um, right, yeah. Um, well, I would say I, I kind of labeled myself an amateur photographer for the last couple of years now. But, um, yeah, I mean, my background is graphic design. That, that's what I do as a job, and I kind of got into it through that, really. I, I started doing a little bit of photography just for, like, jobs at work. Um, so, you know, I had access to a camera, um, you know, and just taking shots for marketing materials, that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it just developed through that, really. And I think I did a video on this a little while back, actually, because, um, like I said, although it, it seems like I've only really been taking it seriously for two years, there's like, I can see where like little elements throughout the last 20 years have kind of like fed into where I am now. And I think... Yeah, it's, it's been all these little bits through my jobs and and then I started like, uh, well, I used to travel a lot as well and I was just taking snaps on my mobile at that point. But I really liked, you know, creating, finding something beautiful, you know, and, and, and trying to emphasize it and show it. Sure. So, and then I think because I enjoyed that and then I, I kind of had previous skills from using the cameras at work. And it just like kind of all came together and I thought, oh yeah, I can, I can get a DSLR myself and I can start doing <laughs> landscape photography and things. And and we're glad you did. It's amazing. You know, some, some of the stuff you're doing is amazing. I went back and watched your first video last night, which came out in what, about July? Is that right? June, July time? Uh, yeah, June. I think June it was. And it really wasn't you doing anything else except explaining how how you how you wanted your channel to go and why you were starting it. And you, you did explain you yeah. your, your background was in graphic design. I think you said in the video though that you hadn't decided which way you wanted your photography to go at that point, whether it was going to be, you know, landscape or macro or you know uh, wildlife or maybe a little bit of all of the above. So, how yeah. do you feel over the last four or five months now that you're have you decided which way you're going to go with that, or are you still kind of no definite decisions? But um, I'm, I'm kind of leaning more towards outdoors, landscape, and maybe I've not done too many videos on wildlife, but I really do enjoy that as well. But you always manage to get some good shots of birds and stuff when you're out? Yeah, I've got a couple of videos with the birds. But it's a little bit more difficult because, you know, if you don't get anything, it's, um, you know, you know, if you go and do landscapes, you know you're going to at least get something because, you know, it's yeah. going to be there, but the birds <laughs> might not be. <laughs> Where um, where in the UK are you located? I just I haven't seen a video where you kind of specifically say, but are you more up north towards the Peak District or? I'm in. Um, I don't know if you know. It's a place called Barnsley, which is just north of Sheffield. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah, but, I mean it's it's within a, an hour's drive of the Peak District. Now is it pretty, pretty good location? Yeah, I'm not hundred. Yeah, I don't think I've ever been to Sheffield on my visits over. So. How about in relation to Manchester? How far are you away from there? About the same, about an hour? It's about two hours to Manchester. About two hours. And you kind of go through you know, through the, the Pennines to get to Manchester. Okay. So, um, 
yeah, if you've got Manchester kind of there, we're here, and then the the Peak District is like kind of through the middle and goes all the way down. So you're closer to the um, the East Coast then. It's kind of really in the middle. To be right, in the, right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really good to get to you know almost anywhere because you know we, like I said we've got the Peak District and then you can get to the East Coast within a couple of hours. You can get to the West Coast. You're not too far away from Scotland. Yeah, you're pretty, so, yeah, it sounds like you're pretty, pretty centrally good. located, so you probably get over to the uh, the Lake District in a couple hours then? Yeah, exactly. Man, that's... Uh... Yeah, until you start getting on the small roads, and then it takes about three days. But ah, I, I've, I've noticed that on my trips over there, because like, if you're going 60 miles somewhere, you know, here, you know, you can pretty much get 60 miles anywhere in about an hour here, and it's a little bit longer over there. Unless yeah. it's right off one of the major motorways, right? I mean, if you have to get yeah, off onto exactly. one of the little back roads, then it really slow, <laughs> slows you down a little bit. Yeah. Especially if you get up into Scotland in the Highlands and then you get behind a slow-moving vehicle and, you know, it can take you hours, but it's all yeah. part of the, the journey, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I love to get off on the back roads. Even over there, I, I do it here. My wife and I hate to drive on the, the highways because you don't really see anything. You know, it's it's when you get off into the yeah. back roads that you really, you know, see what America is all about, right? You know, all the history yeah. and all that kind of stuff. On the highway, it's just kind of, it's good if you're getting, trying to get to go to where you're going fast, I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah, I really need to see some more of America, I think. Um, I know you've been over here quite a bit, haven't you? You've got yeah. friends over here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my best friend lives in Warrington. Hope to meet, you know, Dave when I come over from Let's Click and... Um, yeah. You know, even Andrew. Oh, you're gonna have like a whole tour to make, I think. Well, it'd be it'd be great if I next time I get to come over, if we ever get to travel internationally again. You know, it's not looking real good right now, but yeah. you know, if we could do you know some big, big YouTube type meetup, that would be amazing. Yeah. Everybody do a vlog, you know, do their own version of the vlog of about at the same place. I think that would be really, really yeah. fun. It would just That'd be, be a awesome. really good idea, and it would just be awesome to meet everybody and everybody that we're kind of talk to is kind of centrally located around there, so it wouldn't take much to. You know, if we could all figure out a day to all get together, that would be amazing. Yeah, definitely. If we all just right. get past this uh, coronavirus and then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you said, you said, uh, have you been over to the United States before then? I have, yeah. I've been to New York a couple of times and um, I did a big trip through all the southern states as well. Okay. So starting up in Memphis and then down through Louisiana, and then all the, like, Texas and Arizona, New Mexico. I finished up in Los Angeles. Did you do the Route 66 uh, road that goes, the, you know, the length of that southern part there? I don't think we did that specifically, no. You might have hit it, uh, you know, every now and then. It just kind of gets off. You get on and get off of it every now and then. You yeah, might have run across possibly, and not yeah. even know it. But all right. Yeah, yeah I've been to New York. Oh, I, haven't, I haven't even been to New York. <laughs> no, oh, it's amazing. Oh, I'm sure. Really, yeah, loved it. I just have, I have no desire to go to big, big cities anymore. Um, you know, Miami's big enough. And then when I come over there, I'm right in between Manchester and Liverpool. And those are big enough for me too. So yeah, yeah I, I went to London once and, you know, I, I, I saw all the sites and things like that, but it was, it was just pure madness, you know? Yeah, overwhelming. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's just, you know, I was on the, uh, the tube and just, you know, you're just crushed with people. Right. And, and actually yeah. the reason I went to, um, London was to see um, the England national team football game, and uh, oh really? So yeah, yeah. I, I was at the game where Wayne Rooney scored the the goal that broke uh, uh, Bobby Charlton's old record, okay, the, right, the scoring yeah. record. And then you get back on the tube after the game, and it's just a crush of people. And oh yeah, uh, you know, I was glad yeah, to be now there. Wembley, just yeah, crazy. <laughs> and and and, <laughs> and it's different there because nobody really takes you know drives. They all hop on the train and go to wherever they're going. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I prefer the the smaller, smaller places. I guess out yeah. in the country. It's so. for street photography, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure it's amazing for a lot of different things. It's just, it's just a little bit too busy for my taste. But yeah. okay. I don't live there. <laughs> no, <laughs> we didn't even stay in London. We stayed um, in a town, probably 15, 20 miles north of it, called Hatfield. It's just a little town out in the country. Okay. And yeah. it was just far, just far enough out away from the madness. Where after a, a day of walking around London. It was just, it was yeah. fantastic to get out to the country a little bit. So, yeah. All right. So, um, do you consider yourself still an amateur photographer or are you picking up 
some pro jobs along the way because I mean the the talent uh, to do that kind of thing is obviously there. I mean your stuff's incredible. Uh, well, yeah, thanks. Um, but but no, no, um, it's it's not something that I've, I've really wanted to do professionally. To be honest, I quite like it being, you know, just something I can dip into and I can express myself. You know, when you do something as a job, it's you've always got somebody else telling you what to do, haven't you? So it's, always. <laughs> it's nice to have something where, uh, yeah, it's just I can do whatever I want and. Yeah. It was only me judging it, really. Keep it fun, no pressure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, um, you, you talked about in one of your videos that you were using the Nikon 7500. Is that, is that what you're still currently using? or? Um, well, I've got that one, and I've also got a Z7 now. I've got, I've got me here, actually. That's my Z7. But oh, I've nice. been using um, my D7500 to film on recently. Okay. So um, it's not great, to be honest. I do need something else. I don't know why either. It's, um, I mean, it's fine if you've got the light and it's bright, um, but if it's low light, it's the quality is not very good. I don't really know why. I think because you know, for taking stills, it's fine in low light. It's pretty good. What but, What did you uh, yeah. What did you use the night that you were recording the Halloween video in the dark in the park there? And by the way, if you guys haven't seen that, check that out. Uh, <laughs> I, I I laughed all the way through it. <laughs> it was a fun one, yeah. Yeah. Um, I started off just on my phone for the, the opening shot, I think. Um, it's pretty blurry. <laughs> um, and then and then using the D7500. Okay. And you had your wife there with you that night helping? Yeah, she helps out with the filming, so now it's it a little bit of the practice. It looked like it was pitch black around you, was it? I mean, were, it, was it just totally dark and then just the, the lights that you had on you? It was, yeah. If I turned those lights off, you, you couldn't see anything. So, but, but you had other people walking in the park. Yeah, so a few dog walkers. I, I saw torches <laughs> kind of coming towards us and then turning around. <laughs> Attracted a little bit of attention to yourself, I guess. Yeah, exactly. No, it turned out great, though. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it, it was really fun. You know, I was, I was sitting there watching you do it and, and explaining how you were going to do it. I, I kept thinking, how is this going to work? How is this going to work? And then it looked like you almost set the pumpkin on fire with the uh, the smoke grenade. <laughs> yeah, don't try that home. I think I probably should have said that. but I think you did. <laughs> or be yeah. a little bit more careful than you were. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they're pretty safe, to be honest, the smoke grenades. That's awesome. I don't know if you've used them. but they're, they're... I used them once in a tunnel, and we got choked out. All right. Okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah. from that point of view, maybe <laughs> <laughs> not, not the safest thing, but that's great. Um, all right, so you're you're just going to keep it fun then, and what, what do you what do you plan on doing with your channel? You're up to about 175 sub subscribers now, right? After about four months, yeah, no, oh, that's that's fantastic. Uh, yeah, I don't really know why, <laughs> to be honest, because doing something right. A lot of time I've been doing it, um, but yeah, just to keep improving, I think um, there's a lot of kind of I'd like to get some like drone stuff, so I need to buy a drone um, and get some drone footage in there. I need to get a better vlogging camera, like I said. So I know you said you used the ZV one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I I ruined that first one. Uh, then I got a second one. I, I just love it. It's it's a fantastic little camera. I mean, it's got its limitations yeah. too, but uh, um, I, I honestly I probably haven't put as much into learning out learning how to use it as well as I've you know my other Sony cameras. So I just kind of put it on you know automatic mode and go yeah so it's quite compact as well isn't it so, oh yeah it's uh you know size of your less than the size of your hand so i've never yeah, held, yeah. i've never held a canon everybody uses that canon m50 and I, I would assume it's about the same size you know it's just a, i mean about the same size of a little point and shoot i guess yeah. cool thing is that the door opens the lcd screen opens so you can actually see yourself which is a, a big yeah. bonus too. Yeah, I think that'd be really useful because, I mean, yeah, sometimes my wife's with me and she'll film, but then other occasions I'm by myself and be really useful because, yeah, if I'm by myself, I just kind of put it on a, a narrow aperture. So I've got plenty of depth of field and hope for the best. Sure, yeah, yeah. It's just... The, the, the autofocus is not really good in... Yeah, I mean, like the, the continuous autofocus in the D7500 is not very good. It'll just be you know, searching in and out. On the little Sony, it's got this amazing autofocus where it'll focus on both of your eyes, and then if you like turn your head, it'll it'll still retain the focus on one of your eyes, 
And then if you like turn your head even more, like where I can't see your eyes, then it'll it'll focus on the face part of your your body until it can no longer find something to track onto. And as soon as yeah, you turn your great. head back, you see the the little boxes come back to your eyes. It's a really amazing little camera. Yeah, I know. Like Sony's in general, it is really good with the the autofocus. And yeah, I've been pretty happy with it so so far. So so far, so good. What um. Uh, as far as COVID goes, how uh, you said you didn't, you're not sure how that's going to restrict you. Um, I'm sure you'll still be able to get out locally at the very least, right? I mean, in your your local area. Yeah, yeah I mean that that's the good thing. Like I said, we, there's so much rural area around here. It's um, yeah, within you know half an hour's drive, I can get somewhere fairly nice, even if it's not. You know, there's spectacular, famous places, but yeah. Uh, and sometimes the local places are nicer, aren't they? Because you know that they, they haven't been photographed as much before, and it's been more unique. I think. I thought that was the interesting thing that came out of the last lockdown was that well, they came out with that uh, thousand thousand step challenge. I don't know if you saw any of that, where you would. Uh, I think that's how I met Dave from Let's Click Photography. He challenged me to. Yeah, this where you take a thousand steps from your front door in any direction, and then when you got to a thousand yeah. steps, you stopped and you took your picture. And that, I, I think that basically came out of that whole lockdown because people weren't allowed to yeah. to really get out of the neighborhood much. Yeah, and so, I think um, that as well as um, you know, like macro photography and mm -hmm. all kinds of things you can do in your house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People were coming up with. Uh, oh. You know, yeah, just, the, you know, some of the most inventive stuff, you know, just maybe out of boredom, you know, or just wanting to shoot, you know, but, uh, you know, I think that was the plus yeah. side as far as photography and the lockdown goes. Yeah. Now, Sean, Sean Tucker, I think, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the big uh, YouTube guy. Yeah. He was doing something. It was like um, scene from home, like hashtag scene from home. And it was taking kind of an abstract image somewhere around. So it was like lots of like corners of walls and but making them still look really interesting. And I know I, I was I was following uh, Chris Sale. He lives over there in the, the Lake District. And, you know, he would get out for his hour of exercise and he wouldn't take his full kit with him. He would just take, you know, a small, I think he had the Canon M50, in fact. And he would just stop and take, you know, photos when, whenever he came across the scene. And, uh, you know, it's it, just great to be out, really, right? It's... Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just it's just great. That's my thing lately. It's just kind of great to get out of the house when you can and where you can. Yeah, yeah. I think I might try the the one thousand step thing if, uh, yeah. if there are like tough restrictions. Well, hopefully they're not that tough. But I mean, it, it was a fun challenge to do anyway. You know, it. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. You can do it anytime, I guess. Yep. Um, but I think the wonderful thing about your channel is, as I look back through, I think you have about 30, I, I, I counted 32 videos. I don't know if there's some that I can't see there. If you Sounds have about right, yeah. Um, you know, you have some landscape stuff on there, but then you also have some, um, you know, kind of how-to kind of things or uh, editing type, uh, type, I guess, because of your background. I'm sure your Photoshop yeah. and light, Lightroom skills are pretty good because of your background, right? Yeah. Um, well, yeah, <laughs> because of that. And um, I mean, the other thing is as well, I didn't know how how well the vlogs would go down because, I mean, it's like how much value do you get out? I don't know whether people find it interesting to watch me just doing my thing, you know what I mean? But I mean, I, I, I get a lot of value out of watching your channel and, and the, other, the other channel. So, so I guess there is value there. But I think, you know, when it's your own, you're always a bit more self-critical. And so I, I just kind of thought, you know, I need to do do some other things where people are getting value, so like some tips and and that kind of thing. Well, so again, that's what I really it. like about your channel because I'm, I, you know, I'm 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 good with Lightroom. I'm you know okay with uh, uh, Photoshop. You know, I only kind of only use Photoshop when I really need to. Um, yeah. But you know, when you guys put out, you know, you guys that know more about Photoshop than me, I, I just love it because you. That's where the value comes in for me is, is learning something that I don't really know how to do. And I'd rather wa learn by watching you do it than, I guess, watching some just random tutorial, you know? Like, if I can learn something from yeah. you who I follow and, and admire your work, I would rather do that than watch somebody else's channel. So that's where the value comes in yeah. for me. So oh, That's good. Well, I think everyone has a different experience as well because I, mean, I know, like, my, my family, for example, they they prefer to watch the the outdoor stuff and 
and that kind of stuff. But then when it gets to the, the editing, they find it a bit too technical and uh, and a bit boring, I guess. So it's just yeah. <laughs> keeping a balance. My wife's the same way. She won't watch, uh, you know, if I'm sitting there watching like tutorial type stuff, she'll get up and leave the room. But if I'm watching, you know, somebody walking around the Lake District or the Peak District or over here in one of our national parks, she's, she's all about watching it. You know, um, oh, we should go there. We should go there. You know, kind of, kind of puts it on the the wish list, the bucket list of places to go. Uh, but if if I if it come, if something else comes on where it's just uh, uh, you know tutorials or um, you know things like that, she, she's she's gone or makes me turn the channel. Yeah. So your wife sounds pretty supportive of your your vlogging if she's going out yeah, with you from time yeah. to time. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the good thing because it's, you know, you get out and you get to see places, so it's not all bad. I mean, I kind of get a bit distracted when I'm out taking photographs, I guess. I'm not the, <laughs> the most social when I've got a camera in my hands, but I'm, I'm sure uh, most photographers know that, that feeling and their families, but... You and me both. <laughs> you and me both. Um, but no, it's good. Okay, so say, say you're going to go into this month-long lockdown. What, what, what's the first thing you're going to do once lockdown's over, photography-wise? Well, I mean, yeah, it depends where we are in terms of like what we can do. But you know, if it was completely lifted, you know, getting traveling, and that's another thing when you said about the aims of the channel, like, that's something I really want to do is get to different countries and just some more exciting places. And um, but yeah, yeah. So I guess that's um, my question: uh, what, what's on your bucket list as far as places to go and photograph? Um, some places I would go back to the places I've been to already, so Iceland. Um, but I didn't have the, the best camera at that point. I, it was a pretty entry level Canon I had at that point, and I'd love to go back. And plus, I've got much more experience now. Sure. So I'd love to go back and get some more shots there. Was it? Was it? Um, a, uh, we had, we had a trip scheduled it back in March. It got cancelled right as the whole oh, uh, COVID lockdown thing um, uh, came through here. Um, so I didn't get to go. So how was it? Was it pretty amazing? Oh, it's a, yeah, really amazing place. Um, I mean, we didn't, we scratched the surface, really. We stayed in Reykjavik for about a week. And then from there, we just went to various kind of places within about two or three hours. Did you go so summer down. or winter? Or? It was spring. So kind of like just changing from um, like the shoulder season, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So it, we, we hoped we might just catch the Northern Lights. Um but we didn't have the crazy snow, so the roads were still clear, I guess. Yeah, it's almost glad. I, I'm almost glad ours got canceled because we were going like mid, I think it was mid-March, and they just they had record snowfall in March this past year. And uh, I think we were, we were going to be traveling around in a camper van. We weren't actually going to stay in a hotel or anything. And we probably yeah. would not have been able to travel to all the places that we had hoped to go. Yeah. I mean, even in spring when we went, um, there were still some roads that were a little bit sketchy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I, I imagine sure. when there's a lot of snow, it's, yeah, All right. bad. What about on the European continent? Is there any place that you look forward to going there? Um, I've seen a lot of Europe. Um, I mean, my wife's German, so we, we do go there quite often, and uh, but only to see her family. So we, we always say that we need to see more of Germany itself and get around. So I'd love to um, see a bit more of the kind of Bavaria and, you know, the, the forests and the mountains there. Absolutely. And maybe into like Czech Republic and uh, Slovenia, Slovakia and those kind of places. I think I'd like yeah, to I go mean, the, the list is endless. There's so many great places. I'd, I'd like to go see uh, like northern Italy, you know. I have no desire to see the cities of Italy, but the mountains in northern Italy. Uh, and, yeah. and the places you mentioned like Czechoslovakia and uh, those kind of places would just be... German, Germany would be, wow, you know, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Right. and I was supposed to be um, uh, going to Yosemite um, this year, uh, well, just in October, uh, which obviously got cancelled, yeah. so I've definitely got to get back there, uh, we were going to start in San Francisco and then go down through Yosemite, and we were going, going to a wedding in Santa Barbara, oh, wow. so uh, we would have finished up in Santa Barbara, seeing the wedding, and then then come home but uh that whole coast that whole coast there no matter if you go south or north is amazing just about yeah yeah i mean that's something we don't have here in florida we don't have the 
you know, the rocky cliffs, you know, you can drive, you know, parts along the ocean, it's just flat, you know, but out there, you're just, you know, on the edge of a cliff, you know, overlooking the ocean, it's just amazing. And then if you go north of San Francisco, it goes into Oregon and Washington, where you just have the, the huge, um, you know, the pine trees and the sequoia trees and I, I, that's another place I haven't been, but that's, that's really on my bucket list to go to San Francisco and then go north. You know, I think that was, yeah. um, I know, um, I don't know if you follow Howard Grill. Um, he did, yeah. he did one of these and he's, uh, he does some of his, uh, he's a doctor and, and some of them, uh, some of his work is out in Oregon. So he goes out there and, and works part time, but then he takes his camera out to these just amazing locations really. Okay, I might have to rethink the trip then when we finally do it, and maybe see a bit of the the north north of San Francisco as well. Yeah, even if you you don't even necessarily have to leave uh, California, you just go a little bit north of San, uh, San Francisco, and yeah. that's when you start running into those big uh, giant redwood trees and the sequoia trees, and just so like um like a famous lake or something up there as well. Is it like Tar Lake Tahoe? Or oh, Lake Tahoe, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's out that way. Yeah. So, but yeah, Yosemite would be amazing. You know, the sequoias, Lake Tahoe. Just absolutely gorgeous out in that part of the country. So, Virginia was yeah. nice. Yeah, uh, was Virginia was nice. Um, my mom lives in Virginia, but um, picked her up and we went to West Virginia, which is even more rugged. Um, okay. Very rural. Um, kind of, uh, I don't want to say it's kind of impoverished, you know, um, but, but the scenery is just, wow, you know, it's just amazing. Whereabouts I'm, is it in the country? It's on the East Coast. Um, Virginia is located right next to Washington, D.C., just, you know, below New York okay. City. And so uh, West Virginia is just a little west of actual Virginia. So it's, uh, you know, from here it was, uh, you know, maybe a three and a half hour uh, plane ride. I, I had to change planes in Atlanta, but it was an easy flight up there and uh, easy drive from Virginia into West Virginia. And a lot of history, a lot of art history. We don't have the history like you have it, but, uh, you know, a lot of the history from... Uh, you know, the American Revolution and the Civil War yeah, yeah. happened happened in that part of the country. So just just an amazing place, really. So cool. where else can people uh, get your YouTube channel? But um, yeah, but Instagram as well, correct? Yeah. Um, just trying to remember the uh, <laughs> the best place to go is my, my website, robertbishop.uk. Okay. And then all, all the social media links are on there. Okay. And then I, I've seen you on Facebook too. I think you and I are connected on Facebook too. So I'm gonna I'll put up all your yeah. links on the screen there, uh, and oh, down yeah. in the description, so people can go check out your stuff. And uh, yeah, I highly encourage you if you're not following Robert to uh, to go check him out. Follow him on all of the social media sites. Uh, definitely worth it. Great stuff. Yeah. Well, thanks for inviting me on because uh, yeah, I mean I've watched all the episodes so far and. Um... I'm yeah, trying. Really enjoyed them. I'm, I'm trying to work my way around. <laughs> um, the Australian guys are, are very hard because they're about 14 hours ahead about, of us. Yeah. yeah, they're already in tomorrow, <laughs> so trying to line that up is hard. But uh, and I did. What work. time were you online with Rory then? I think it was one or two a.m. <laughs> <laughs> I don't sleep much anyway, so it was fine. He kept uh, he kept Our apologizing, dedication. but it's not a big deal. Um, okay. But yeah. Um, and my, my next thing that I want to do is I, I kind of want to get like all of us together on like a, uh, like a group chat on here, you know, and just kind of, oh, yeah, yeah. just, just kind of chat, you know, maybe do a two part series, get maybe up me and the UK guys on here and then, you know, have like a little, you know, everybody bring a beverage and sit around and chat for a while. And then maybe, yeah, I, I maybe I would do the UK guys too, because, or I'm sorry, the Australian guys. And, um, uh, yeah, I think it would be good for him to kind of mix it up a little bit on the channel. Yeah, definitely, yeah. No, it's great because it's the one thing I didn't expect, um, the whole community thing, uh, when I started the channel. Um, you know, I thought it was just going to be a one-way thing where I put my videos on and uh, yep. that was it. But it's been great. Just there's so many channels and everyone's so active and commenting and things. It, and obviously what you're doing is is really good as well so thank you i mean i find myself waiting for people's videos to come out like i'm as anxious for your video to come out as as i get for mine and you know and can't you know if i see it come up on my on my phone or something you know i'm, I'm not somewhere i can watch it you know it's the first thing I, i'm setting myself a reminder to watch it when i get home and everybody's yeah. so great about you know just being supportive and you know 
you know, trying to help you out and, and build your channel. So I think we, you know, yeah. this group of people we have here and hopefully we'll add more in the future too, but you know, just everybody's really supportive and just really helpful and yeah. really friendly and, and, and doing this to me or for me has been the best part is getting to people, meet people with the same ideas, the same passions from different parts of the world and learning a little bit about what, you know, what they do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I used to find myself watching the bigger channels and, um, and now less and less, I, and I'm just watching more of the, 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 the growing channels, we'll call them. Yep, I'm exactly the same. You know, I, I would rather focus my energies on, on, on the, you know, the people with, you know, less subscribers, you know. Um, I used to watch the really big guys. I, I'm like you, I, I find myself rarely watching them anymore because I want to spend my time, uh, you know, watching our community here and, and seeing what we're doing and how we're growing. All right, yeah, Robert, I think we're really cool. I think we're almost out of time here, but hey, I want to thank you so much for coming on. It's a pleasure to talk to you in person. Finally. Yeah, it feels strange, doesn't it? It's like the first time we've ever spoken face to face, but uh, it doesn't feel unusual. <laughs> that, you know, I think I was nervous the first time I did this, maybe even the second time, but but now I just get excited to meet the people that I watch, you know, spend so much of my time watching their videos. So and it feels pretty comfortable, I think, you know, so. Again, I, I think that's just kind of the nature of this community that I think we're all trying to build yeah. here, and it's perfect. So, well, thank you so much. Well, I, saw, I don't know if I've got time to say, but I saw uh, I saw your video with the Raws as well, editing the Raws. So thanks for including me on that one. That, that was great. Oh yeah, um, that that video is actually doing pretty well. I was kind of surprised, but everybody did such a great job of it, and and everybody's like, some great oh, edit, yeah. yeah, everybody's like, do a part two. You know, the people that didn't. Uh, <laughs> didn't send one in like oh i can't i hope you do a part two so i might do a part two in the future yeah so all right pal thank you so much uh good luck thank during you. your lockdown and you know please stay safe you and your family over there yeah you too all right bud all right hey, everybody Rob, robert bishop robert bishop photography go check him out all right pal cheers paul have a great day thanks robert see you later man all right bye bye bye